Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. We're going to talk about PEG ratio this time around with Kevin Matris, top stock screener, head of the Research Wizard Division here at Zax.com. Now, I know that we've talked about this before, uh, or does it seem to me we've talked about this before, or is this like an ex-girlfriend's name? <laughs> <laughs> peg ratio that you're talking about. No, the peg ratio, that indeed is a ratio. It's not a person, it is a thing. Um, but it is a ratio used for determining uh, whether or not a company is undervalued or overvalued. Okay. So to start this whole thing off, why don't we look at a definition first, all right? All right, sure. Definition of peg ratio is the P-E ratio divided by the growth rate. So a value of one or less is generally considered good. That would mean it is at par or it is undervalued. Mm -hmm. While a value of greater than one in general is considered not as good. In other words, the stock would be considered overvalued. So uh, it, what's interesting is that a lot of people believe that this ratio does tell a more complete picture than the P-E ratio, and I, uh, I tend to agree with that. For example, check this out. A company with a P-E ratio of 25 and a growth rate of 20 would have a peg ratio of 1.25. And you can see the calculation in parentheses right there. Mm -hmm. 25 is the PE divided by 20, which is the growth rate. That gives you a 1.25. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the company with a PE ratio of 40 with a growth rate of 50, that would have a peg ratio of 0 0.8. Now, based on this metric, that company with the P-E ratio of 40 would actually be considered a better bargain than the company with a P-E ratio of 25. All right, so clear it up for us. How you said a moment ago, it goes beyond just the P-E ratio. Right. How does it do that? Well, traditionally, investors will look at a, a stock with a lower P-E ratio as being a better bargain. But if you were to look back at these examples, you can see that the company with a uh, P-E ratio of 25 doesn't have the growth rate to justify that multiple. Uh, so in this case, it would be overvalued in comparison to its growth rate. Okay. But when you look at the one with the higher P-E ratio, that actually is selling at a lower price or a lower point than its growth rate. So based on this metric, this shows that it is truly a better bargain. It's undervalued, and this has the most room to grow when you're looking at its growth rate. And that is why people like looking at this, because again, there's a lot of companies out there with PEs that are very cheap, but they're cheap for a reason. People aren't willing to pay up for it because there is no growth. Looking at this metric looks at both of those very, very important things, and I think that's why it's so popular. All right, lay those parameters on us. Yeah, sure, the, uh, the screen that we're running with today, oh, by the way, here's one slide that I forgot to go, uh, go to. It says, and this will kind of help encapsulate the whole idea of PEG. The lower the PEG, the better the value because the investor would be paying less for each unit of earnings growth. So that is something to kind of keep in your mind when you're trying to figure out what the PEG ratio is, all right? Got it. Anyways, looking at this week's screen, we are starting off by looking at companies with the Zacks rank of a one. So we are only interested in looking at companies that have a strong buy, okay? Next, we are looking at companies with an average broker rating of less than or equal to 2.5. This means the brokers, too, have to be on board. They have to be in the better part of a strong buy or buy rating. Next, we are looking at the projected one-year growth rate. We want this to be greater than or equals to 20, so we are only looking at companies that indeed have projected strong performance, right? Then we get to the PEG ratio. We want the PEG ratio to be less than one, so we are using a classic textbook example of what would be considered a good undervalued stock, and then we are just applying this to, uh, to companies that are trading at least $5 a share. All right, give us the stocks that came through. Yeah, there was a bunch of stocks that came through. I think this screen generated about, um, I think like maybe 40 or 45 stocks. Here's a pretty diverse set of the, the companies that came through. You have uh, Bucyrus International, mm -hmm. uh, DeVry Incorporated, Inverness Medical, OSI Systems, and then Scholastic. And what's interesting is that once again, each of these companies has 
pretty spectacular projected growth rates, but their P-E ratio is trading below their growth rate, and I believe that is what makes these companies very good bargains to put on your radar screen. All right. Do you own any of these? I do not have those. All right. Check out the text version of this week's Screen of the Week, especially if you're accessing this video piece from outside of Zax.com. All you need to do is go to our homepage, Zax.com, scroll down that homepage till you get to Kevin's picture, and click on the headline, which is linked in right next to his picture. It'll take you right to this information. With Kevin Matris and the Screen of the Week, I'm Terry Ruffalo.